hi and welcome to the third part in the series of videos which I'm doing on the Bruder John Deere 5115M tractor. In the last couple of videos I started off by taking the thing apart and in the second video I installed the Temia 3 speed gearbox for the transmission and I showed how I got the wheels to be able to attach. Since then I've actually completed the model and I've taken it back apart again. The reason that I did that was I wanted to make sure that everything worked and it's quite difficult to do your experimentation on camera and expect people to sit and watch it, so I didn't. I've finished off cutting and grinding the various parts of the plastic which I needed to remove for parts and I'll put some photos up in a second of all of the cutting which I did. I've also installed this servo here which is a Hobby King item and it's a HK1578B metal geared servo which I trimmed the tabs off there and there and I glued in using this Evo stick fast setting epoxy. It says fast setting but actually it initially sets quite quickly to a rubbery kind of finish which is quite good for moving it around for a while but then you need to leave it a few hours to actually harden off and then it's kind of like any other epoxy. When I did first test run the tractor the main problem that I found because it actually goes surprisingly well the main problem which I found was that the wheels were much too light and in particular the front wheels so what I did was I installed some roofing type lead in the front and in a second I just cut to a quick bit of video showing how I managed to put it into the back using very much the same method this improves the performance of the tractor an awful lot so I'm going to start by putting the putting some lead in these rear wheels I've already done the done the front wheels so with with lead because it's a pretty poison substance you have to be very careful maybe use gloves but I'm going to be washing my hands straight after I've been handling the lead so I'm cutting a couple of two centimeter wide strips and it cuts easily enough with scissors, which is quite good. I suppose you could use a knife, but I just prefer this. And just to get about the right amount, I'm just going to pop it inside and see how much I need. With the with the front, it's not so easy to do that, and I had to actually take a guess and try and measure it, and it turned out a bit short. But I don't think that the wheels are really going round fast enough to make that much difference. A quick wipe down of everything with the isopropanol alcohol to make it stick. There's that. And that. evaporates virtually straight away. I don't think that the lip in here is quite as big as the tape and I'm reckoning on it being about half so I'll just put some tape onto it. If I was to leave this on it would just pick up every piece of dust that came anywhere near the tractor. This is how I found it, it was best to do it on the front wheels so get it to a roughly round ish sort of shape put it in there and then pulling a bit of tape off at a time
just pull it round. It obviously doesn't have to be perfect, but we now have a, a wheel that weighs more than twice as much as it did in the first place. I'll just do the other one as well. Right, on with the build. Now, I'm going to leave the wheels off until the ray lasts because it's actually quite good to be able to get to everything. With these gearboxes, it's really important that you've got smooth running. And one of the things that can cause that not to be the case is if the bushing on this on this on this first axle isn't quite in the right place and it's causing binding now I can see that this gear is actually moving quite easily so I'm happy that, that one's okay and we also seem to have reasonable movement side to side on the on the other gears and when I when I turn it by hand it and bear in mind it's going back through the gearbox, it doesn't seem to have too much resistance, so that's okay. I think in the last video I covered putting a tie wrap around the motor to keep it still and stop it moving around too much. The next thing which I want to show is the front steering. Now there is a trick for getting this front in and out and I'll just put it back on so that I can show you how how to get it out. If you if you put a fairly large screwdriver in the back and you pull it forward, like so, that actually comes out easily without doing any damage and you can take it in and out very easily. This is one of the few things on the Bruder YouTube channel which they show you and is quite helpful. In order to get the servo to be able to drive the steering, what I did was I made a small hole here, which I think was a two millimeter hole, and using my faithful Z bender to get the part which goes through the servo horn and in here, I made up a metal rod and in my other videos I use this quite extensively but you can see how when you push it down it actually bends it to the right kind of shape and that was done on both ends of this piece of metal sometimes you need to experiment and you certainly need to be very careful about chopping the the end here to make sure that you've got the clearance that you want but that it's not going to fall off so if I just pop this on and I'll show you how it all goes. That's on in, in the right place. And because of the angle that I mounted this servo at, I've actually made it easy for myself be able to put the screw to hold the servo arm onto the servo so I'll just do that take a big chance here with this table because if I drop this screw it's going to take me a while to find it that's on and in place and then It's easy enough just to, and, it's, and I can't show this on the camera too easily because let's move the servo arm. Hopefully, this will come out. So I'll put that in its hole. it in so we still have the full movement of the 
kind of front suspension and we have the servo here for the steering. I'll come back to that in a minute and you'll be able to see how much it actually steers. So that's that end done. Okay, so for the next part of this video it's going to be installing the motor, the electronics and putting the tractor back together again. For the motor, I'm actually using the stock motor. I did try a 6 volt motor, but in the end I've decided that the stock 3 volt motor which comes with the Tamiya gearbox is absolutely fine. The only thing to remember to do is to reduce the throw on the transmitter and I'll just show you that. There, so you can see that I've reduced the throttle throw to 50% to take account of the fact that the voltage of the motor is 3 volts and I'm using a 2S LiPo which is a 7.4 volt battery. So for the speed controller I'm using this very inexpensive 10 amp speed controller. The main reason that I chose it was A for its price and B because it's very small and the biggest challenge with all of this truck apart from getting it apart is actually the fact that you've got so little space to put everything. I'll just put an image up in a second of the eBay page where I bought it for anyone who's interested. Battery wise I'm using a Hobby King Zippy 500 milliamp hour compact battery. Not very expensive but it was size that I was after. For the receiver I'm using an orange Spectrum compatible receiver. These are much harder to find now because they only go with the older Spectrum transmitters. Spectrum do do a receiver of the same size but it is a lot more expensive so if you're able to source these maybe second hand on eBay and if you have the older kind of transmitter it's a much cheaper option. Right so the first job is to put the motor into the gearbox and having ground everything out I know that this will fit that's right and that is now in the next thing to do is to put in the receiver and it's all quite a tight fit however it does just miss the motor and the shaft sticking out a little bit from the back there now rather than stick it down I decided that I want to hold it down with a tie wrap. What I did was I made some holes underneath here and there's one there, one in here, one here and one here and I made them with a little 2mm drill bit just making the hole and then pulling it backwards and forwards to make a slot that the cable ties will go through so I'll just go ahead and do that. That's that. Get the receiver again. Put it in where it goes and while I'm at it I'm actually going to take the opportunity to put a couple of wires where I want them so that's the wires all out of the way and then taking my cable ties and I want both of them I want both of these lumpy bits to end up down inside so pull that one until it grips well I can't completely have that but I can certainly well, I'll see where they end up. I certainly want to miss the aerial so that we're not putting any strain on that. And I think that that's going to be okay. I don't think it's going to fear with anything and it will keep the receiver nicely in place.
the next thing which I wanted to think about was actually mounting the switch for the speed controller in a place where you can get to it but it's not showing from outside the model so what I did was I cut, cut a couple of holes in here and then just squared it out using a modelling knife and then put a couple of 2mm holes each side to correspond with the holes on this. So that's going to sit in there neatly like that and I just need to screw it on with a couple of 2mm nuts and bolts which are here. One quite good trick is to hold the nut on one side just using a drill bit or something getting it lined up and then posting the screw in and getting it started like that that seems okay and I'll just test it quickly with the battery That all seems to be good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece on and if you look at the back here I've actually cut out some of the plastic there and that's to exactly make room for the speed controller. Now before I put this first layer of the back on I'm just going to do a little bit of wire tidying Because when it all goes together, if you've got any wires going over these places where the plastic comes together, it won't go together. And, and, and the battery connector here comes out over the top of the motor. So I'll just tuck away the wire, the excess wire for this speed controller link to the receiver. That can go there and then the speed controller is going to sit about there so I'm just going to gently ease this piece on I'm just doing it a little bit at a time making sure that the tabs on each side are going into the right place so I'm just doing it a little bit at a time it's okay there, that's okay there that's why I'm doing this with the wheels off so that I can completely see what's going on and none of the wires seem to be trapped so that's all good and the cable tie that I put around the speed controller isn't interfering with anything so that's all okay now the speed controller needs to go at the back in the centre A little bit lower than this piece going across so it needs to go about there and that's in order that it can slot in here without fouling on anything I'm going to lightly stick it in place so that it doesn't move around both surfaces cleaned with the isopropanol alcohol So I want it in the centre, slightly lower 
and the top. That looks about right. And the only way that I can tell is by is by taking the seat and putting it on. Now, <clears throat> I'm probably going to talk about this a bit later, but this is about the third time that I've tried to put this thing together and I've ended up swapping out the receiver, the servo, the speed controller, the battery, the motor, and it kept glitching. And in the end, I discovered that what it was was the aerial was too close to the motor or the speed controller. It's really important to keep these things separate. So this I'm actually rooting out of the model at the earliest opportunity and it's actually this piece here where that happens so you just don't want there to be any interference at all. And I'd say that's okay. Good. Well, I might as well put this in place and thread the aerial through as I was just describing. So that I actually made a hole in the side here, like a little two mil hole. The aerial's going through there. I don't want it tangling with the main power connector. So that's going to sit there. And then and then we have the main cab, which is what will lock everything together. Just before we do, not forgetting the steering wheel arrangement, which actually fits there first. Because there are a couple of little tabs here, I'll post that over this like that. Get the tabs in there. And then it should all slide down. into place. I can hear everything locking nicely and and where when I was built when I was dismantling the model in the first place there were some tabs that I pulled out I can actually push these green tabs back in So that it's locked down even better. Okay. So the aerial wire, I'm going to want that to kind of go up here. And for the time being, I'm just going to use a couple of tie wraps to secure it. I might change the black tie wraps afterwards or route it differently, but. I don't want it getting caught on anything and I want to be able to test it with the aerial where it is and if you push the little block inside it becomes much less noticeable than the aerial I'm actually just going to have that resting inside inside there next thing to do is to Put the back wheels on, put it on the front, that's that, 
the last thing to do is to figure out how to put this battery inside this bonnet. Now I've just put this piece here back the exhaust stack because that was the piece which really makes this hard to get out and so I've actually trimmed the tab off it there where it did plug into here so it just rests against it and once you once you once you put this in it actually quite stays quite firmly in place now the trick of getting the battery in there is actually to carve this piece around here and it's easy enough to pull out and I sliced the top and I trimmed quite a bit of it so if you compare your one to this one you'll see what's left and to get these sides to stick back in because they're made of a soft plastic which won't glue with let's say epoxy or super glue I used this canopy glue which I've used quite extensively on sticking clear plastic you know for windows on boats and planes and that sort of thing and having put these in and left them to dry for a couple of hours they stayed in place quite effectively now the battery and it and it needs to go a certain way around which is that way around fits in there quite nicely and you need to get it so that it's pushing right up to the top and the charging lead there just needs to be out of the way. Now to stop the battery falling down inside I drilled a couple of two millimeter holes across in the sort of engine area there and with this with this spare piece of thin metal rod it's probably about two mil. If I push this across through the holes and push it in like that it's not very noticeable but it keeps the battery up and then installing the battery into the truck is pretty simple you need to make sure that none of the wires are going to foul on the servo so you start by plugging it in So, and then just laying the wire inside so that it's not pushing against the servo. Pull this out of the way so there's a little tab there on the back of the exhaust stack. So I just pull it out, pull it across so it's not in the way. And there it just sits in place quite happily and we push that back. And that is the truck basically done. Let's just give it a quick test to make sure that it's working. We have steering. And it seems to be working okay. Next thing to do is to give it a little test, towing some things to see how it does.
so in conclusion I think that this has been another successful Bruder conversion. The big challenge here was obviously fitting everything into such a small space. It does go incredibly well. Putting the lead weights into the tyres completely transformed its performance. Obviously it was really important to make sure that the aerial wire is kept well away from any of the other electronics in there. As I said in the first part of the first video, I never intended doing this one. It was really just that I got this free with the trailer if you like, and then I couldn't resist having a go at changing it. The parts to do this were all very cheap. It perhaps wasn't as easy as I thought it would be in the first place, but then if you take your time, it's a perfectly possible conversion to do. You just need to take your time and be very careful about everything and be meticulous about where you put the wires. I hope people have found this interesting and perhaps it's given you the urge to have a go at doing this or maybe you've got some thoughts on how I could have done it differently. Please feel free to comment in the box below. I hope you found this video useful and interesting and if you like it please give a thumbs up any comments or questions in the box below. Thank you for watching.